know, there's a lot of frustration that happens for the patient's family and for a patient themselves that dies when they are only on hospice for a couple days of service. So this is one of those areas that I feel I really have to speak to you about. When a patient does not have enough time to be on hospice services, they really have not had enough chance to get to the place where they're comfortable with the peace of dying. And that is the ultimate mission of hospice. It's to make sure that a patient can come to a point where they are ready to leave this world and do so supporting their friends and their family members and making sure that any of their last wishes are known, words that they wanted to say have been spoken and all the plans for their um, funeral as well as their legacy planning has been done. And the only way to get that done is by making sure that we take every single one of those patients who die very quick on services, use them as a teaching opportunity to go back and meet with the hospital discharge planners, with the patient's primary care docs or their nurse practitioners, and reviewing the case. Say, hey, you know, it's so sad. We only had Mrs. Jones on services for two days. You know, you guys have probably been taking care of her for a while. Tell me about Mrs. Jones. You know, when did she first become sick? How, how was she over the last year? How about the last six months? And then you could say, you know, I really wish that we would have gotten into services six months ago when whatever they just mentioned happened, because that would have probably been the perfect opportunity where we could have made such leaps and bounds and done some great legacy planning. Like one of the things we just did with a patient was we wrote letters because we knew that two of their grandchildren were getting married over the next two years and the grandmother wasn't going to be there for those weddings. We wrote letters to both of the brides so that she, they would feel that their grandmother's presence was there. Those are the type of things that we can do in hospice, really make a lot long lasting impression and make somebody even be part of future events that are down the road um, if hospice can be involved early on. So it's a great opportunity whenever you have a patient that dies, I want you to very quickly grab that medical record, go to the physician's office, set an appointment to sit with him for 10, 15 minutes and go through the care plan. Look at what happened. You might wanna involve your nurse leadership for this. And this way they can really identify and teach because when you expand that doctor or nurse practitioner's awareness of when somebody should have been referred, you're also teaching them to use that patient's story as the vignette, as the reason that somebody else should be identified to be referred right now. And it's only your powerful storytelling that's going to help that patient, um, that future patient get referred sooner by you triggering a doctor's memory. And doctors have told us time and time again, they love the roadmap to referral because they love patient vignettes. Our hospice vignettes even if they're not going to give you a referral today when the doctor reads a story about a patient who just has aspirated and now has pneumonia for the third time because they have a swallowing difficulty, even if that doesn't trigger a patient today, the story is going to stay with that physician that they're going to be able to trigger a future patient. So use your patients to teach. Use those quick deaths to expand knowledge. It's going to give you more referrals in the future and earlier patient referrals.